So I am into my new portal, which yeah. is purview.microsoft.com, and I'll go to my information protection. Uh, this will leverage me in terms of, or this will offer me in terms of creating new sensitivity labels. So I'll go to my sensitivity labels. and try to create a sensitivity label and showcase you different functionalities and offerings when it comes to different labels, um, also dependent upon different scopes. Okay, so we'll create a very first label. Uh, I will name this as ESPC Confidential for an example. That's going to be the name of the label or uh, the display name. Uh, now, all the labels which is created newly, they would be higher in the priority. I'll talk about the significance of the priority as well. Uh, then you have description for the users. You have description for the admin as well. Uh, now, you can also offer color coding to your labels. I'll be showing once I'll be showing you the end user experience. So let's say I'll have this as Amber. I'll go next. Uh, these are the scopes. Uh, we won't be covering scheme dice data, uh, which is like more assets towards your, uh, you know, SQL, Azure SQL, because this session is more focusing upon uh, SharePoint only. Uh, so you do have items uh, which offers you to have sensitivity labels leverage on files, emails, and meetings. I'll be just focusing upon files as of now, because obviously, uh, you know, uh, the session is SharePoint, and hence uh, we'll be just focusing upon SharePoint and OneDrive. And later on, I'll be also showing you experience uh, for groups and sites. So for this one, I'll just choose items as a file. Uh, you can extend your uh, sensitivity label, offering it with uh, the encryption. So let's say I want to have encryption in place once I enable the sensitivity label for my end users. And I also want to have the content marking. I'll go next. I say I want to provide encryption right now. So that means I'm defining what all users can do with a content when they receive a content with this sensitivity label applied on it. So I am applying uh, the permissions right now when defining the sensitivity label. That's one thing I'm going to do so. User access to the content expire. Uh, do I really wish uh, that once I share the file with a user, for an example, if I talk about the business use case, uh, let's say uh, you have a project which is running for six months and after that it's going to be over. Uh, you say, okay, all the users will um, you know uh, uh, lose the access after six months for an example uh, allow offline access so you would still be able to allow users to have uh, you know uh, uh, access to the files in offline mode offline doesn't mean uh, so always doesn't mean literally always it's like 30 days after 30 days user will have to re-authenticate and next 30 days cycle will be uh, initiated as you say that here you need to provide the permission so if I say add all users and groups, it will take my users, which falls into my domain. So all the users would have permission to the content once they have access to the content with the help of sensitivity label, because I am defining that entire my domain or the users falling into my domain, they would have access uh, onto the content. Now, what level of access they would have once they receive a content? So by default, it's co-author, so they can do everything. They can view, they can edit, they can print, uh, they can reply, they can forward, but they cannot change the label. You do have different flavors of uh, the permissions as well. It's co-author as well. If you grant co-author, we would not recommend unless you have a business case, then they would also be able to change the label on the existing content once they receive uh, the content. And then if you need to create your custom permissions, you would be able to create your custom permissions as well. So for the time being, I'll say, I just need to make sure I will provide co-author to my entire organization. Uh, you can choose add authenticated users. Any user who would be able to authenticate uh, would have access to the content uh, once this uh, label will be applied. You can add specific users or the group. So for an example, you want to leverage this label to a sales department or let's say for a marketing department. You are just rolling them, um, you know, so you just add them into this. A uh, specific uh, email address, let's say you have a channel partner or a vendor partner, uh, which you want to extend this label for. Uh, so you can say xyz.com or for an example, anything, abz.com. Uh, and then once those users will receive uh, this uh, uh, file or a content, they would have access or they would be able to consume the content uh, onto the file. I save it. So that means I have granted access to my entire tenant uh, as a co-author. I'll move next. 
I can provide watermarking. Um, I can provide header. I can provide footer. So for this demo, I'll just provide the footer. I would say uh, confidential. I say save. Next. Uh, now this is called as uh, automatic labeling and this is called as client side auto labeling i'm going to show you the service side auto labeling as well so based upon the content you say uh, the label will be applied automatically so i would go in i say if the content contains sensitive info and i choose credit card so let's say if you are writing a document in a sharepoint uh, or an email for an example if i have defined that the system will find uh, the sit which is credit card information it will apply the label automatically it will apply this label automatically so it's like automatically apply to the label and you can offer the policy tip to the end user as well uh, however there is one more mechanism rather being applying or enforcing the label automatically you can recommend the label so it, it would say uh, that as per the organizational policy uh, it seems that it contains any sort of sit and uh, the label is recommended so we have a differentiate, I mean, in terms of applying the label or enforcing the label or then recommending the label. But in both the scenarios, user would be able to change the label uh, themselves. I will turn this off for the time being. This is also called as client side labeling for an example. And this is also called as automatic labeling. Uh, now, these settings are associated with groups and sites. I would say that. And hence, we will go back and see what settings are available into groups and sites. Now I choose groups and sites as well. So I'm just skipping this because we have configured this already. Now, if I talk about groups and site, we do have options to configure privacy. We do have an option to uh, extend the label and configure external sharing capabilities with the help of conditional access policies as well. So let's say if you are applying this label on a container, let's say Office 365 group or a SharePoint or a Teams, uh, you can say once this label is applied, what gonna be the privacy label? Is it like public or a preview? Or if, if you want user to choose themselves, is it like if you select none, then user would have leverage to select themselves. Uh, do you wish the owner of uh, the Office 365 group would be able to add guest or not within uh, that, that Office 365 group? You can control that as well. Next, what is a sharing capability uh, of the site? Uh, once you apply this label on a site level, uh, whether it can, the, the content would be able to share with anyone, uh, new and existing guest, existing guest, and only people in your site, this settings will supersede the settings what you have on a site level. That's really important. And then you can create a conditional access policy. Uh, if a user is coming from, let's say, an unmanaged device on a SharePoint site where you have applied this sensitivity label, uh, whether he would have full access, uh, whether he would have limited web based access, or he would not have any access. So these are the capabilities you can offer and leverage within the sensitivity label, both for groups and also for the item level. But once this label is created, it's not the end of the story. You have to publish this label so people would be able to consume it. So I would go to a publish label. I would choose my label which I wish to publish. So let's say I pick any three. Add a label. I go in, I pick my audience. Do I wish to leverage this label uh, to all the users, like in terms of they would be able to see that into their SharePoint? Or I want to have a very specific audience for that, for a sales department, for a marketing department, which not which which should not be available for other users. I would say for all users. Then you can say uh, user must provide justification to remove labels or lower its classification. Let's say I have applied a confidential label and now I need to lower down uh, the, the, the label to public or a general. I need to provide the justification which is recorded into the unified audit logs as well uh, with a description. Require users to apply a label to their email and documents. So if I really wish uh, that you know users would be able, so this is called as mandatory labeling. Uh, users would not be able to send an email or would save a document unless they will apply the label. So this is must to have label. Uh, required users to apply labels on a fabric or Power BI. That is also a scenario and then help page. So at the end, you would have a help page where you can uh, redirect user to a help page. Uh, it could be a SharePoint internet page providing guidance to the users. Uh, and hence, after this, you need to publish the policy once the, you know, 
policy is published, user would be able to consume the label once it is visible into the SharePoint. I'm going to show you uh, the end user experience as well. But before I do so, I'll jump on to the service side automatic labeling as well before I forget that. So now I have shown you the client side automatic labeling. I go to policies and we do have a flavor called as uh, automatic labeling, which is called as service side labeling to apply label on uh, the documents sitting at rest on SharePoint and OneDrive. So I say I want to identify a document with a credit card information and I want to apply a confidential label automatically, which is for the documents which is sitting at rest. So I will say custom. I would say let the name remain as is. And then I will go next. I'll choose a location where I want to target the sensitivity label automatically. I'll say all my SharePoint sites. I say next. I, I will write a rule what I am looking for into a SharePoint repository. So before the rule gets triggered, I would say SharePoint rule. Add a condition. Now I'm looking for a documents or a content which contains credit card information. And this will look for a credit card information. And once the credit card information is found onto a SharePoint, depending upon what sources and what sites I have selected, I'll go next. It will ask me to choose a label. Now, what label I need to apply on the content when the sit will be find or found. Uh, I say I'll go and apply this confidential label. I go next. Oh, okay. I'll change it because that's for uh, the recipient only. So I will apply, let's say, all employee high confidential. I say next. And now it will run into a simulation mode, showcasing me all the result into the content explorer. And if I'm satisfied with the results, I can say turn on the policy and it will apply the label in a sequential manner. So this is called as applying the labels automatically onto the document sitting at rest. So that's the flavor of the the sensitivity label uh, i know it's too short time to explain that because uh, it, it's it's a long topic uh, a lot of planning and extensive discussion is required uh, but just still it will provide you a glimpse and now i'm going to show you the end user experience if you have documents uh sitting onto the the sharepoint and also if you are applying label onto the app you basically do have two flavors this will look like this uh, the color coding or uh, the labels what you have configured uh, So one is assign permission now that I have assigned permission I can also say let user assign the permission. So that means when a user will apply the label uh, They will choose What users need to have access on the content for an example? If I go in I say recipient only and that can also be configured from uh, the the um, SharePoint uh, well, not the SharePoint, but uh, the purview portal while creating the label it'll take five seconds uh, to pop up the window if everything works fine. And then I'm sure going to show you the new modern look of window where you would be able to define uh, the users who would have access onto this document if I'll share the document with them. So that's like viewers. I can define the viewers. I can define the restricted editors. I can define the editors. I can define the owners. And then we have more options there. Uh, you know, I can ask for a request for the permissions and then, you know, I can set the expiration date. Uh, but if I do not have the user defined label, I do have a normal uh, label, uh, which is like providing encryption to the end audience. I can just apply the label, uh, save it, and I'm done with applying the label. But if I go to my SharePoint, let's say I'll go to my SharePoint. I create a document and want to apply a label to it. I create a document. And this is like on web. Uh, so I'm applying a label onto a SharePoint document library directly. So I have the labels available here. Okay, I'll wait.
So it's personal, public, general, and confidential. So let's say if I apply confidential and then say all employees within the organization, and then I close uh, the document, uh, it will be applied automatically on this label. I say uh, not leave the site, but cancel. And then if I do this, uh, the label will be applied automatically once it has been fixed from this site. Uh, so I'll allow the access. And yes, the label is applied now, the confidential one and uh, it is uh, reciprocated back into the sensitivity column that yes the label has been applied you can also apply a label on a document library level i can do that and if any document falling into this document library uh, it will inherit the label from the document library itself so that's about sensitivity label in nutshell providing more encryption uh, but if i talk about uh, applying the labels on a container level i can actually go to my sharepoint site i create a new sharepoint site for an example And then I say SharePoint. I use this template, for example. I would say uh, ESPC. We'll check the name uh, and then apply the owner. I say next. And then it will offer me the labels as well, what I have uh, you know, leveraged onto my container level. So if I choose business confidential, you see it's public because I have infused that, you know, whenever user will uh, provide uh, business confidential, it will have a privacy as public. But if I choose high confidential, the privacy will be uh, private and based upon the other settings, what I have shown will be implemented on the site level as well. Mm -hmm.